In this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up your cameras and lighting to look the best they possibly can for your live stream. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This is part two in a series on live streaming your worship service. What camera to use for streaming is a common question. Also, I hear it asked often, what camera should I use for low light? I'm going to share with you the secret to getting a great looking image no matter what camera you use. It's your lighting. This is always a really unpopular answer. Lighting and proper exposure are what make images look great. Lighting might not be as exciting as cameras and switchers and all the other stuff that comes with live streaming. And sometimes there's a tendency to think that if we just spend more on a camera that's good in low light, we won't have to worry about our lighting. The reality is spending more on a camera will just show in more detail how bad your lighting is. If you get a good handle on lighting, you're really going to set yourself up for success with your live stream. I'm going to go deep into some lighting, then we'll come back around and talk about how to set up your camera. I don't know where you're at in your church. You may already have a lighting system in place or you may need to start from scratch. But let's talk through a few guidelines for lighting for video. The first thing you'll want to do is create an even front white wash light. Every position should be lit with at least two points of light and the best angles will be 45 degrees out horizontally and 45 degrees up. If you go any steeper than that, you're going to get long shadows under the eyes and chin that won't look good. You can go shallower if you need to, but it's going to start shining in people's eyes and you might get complaints. If the area you are lighting is larger than what two lights can cover, then add another set of two for the next area over. Adding a diffusion gel in your lights like a Roscoe 119, which you can find a link to down in the description of this video, will also help with any shadows and it helps when blending two areas together. You can use just about any light for this, an ellipsoidal or a par can. I really like the ETC Source 4 PARs for this. They put out a nice strong wash of even light. I know that LED lights are getting really popular now. Just be aware that most of the cheaper ones don't put out nearly as much light as a conventional fixture, and unless it's specifically made for video, there's a good chance it will flicker in video. And that is terribly distracting and annoying for anyone watching. So if you're considering LEDs, even for a wall light or something in the background, be sure to confirm that they are flicker free and made for video. The second thing to look for in lighting for video is separation. You want your subject to stand out from the background and not just blend into it. This can be accomplished in several ways. One is with three point lighting where you add a third light as backlight to your two points of front light. This creates a nice highlight around the edges of your subject that helps separate them from the background. Another way is to control the lighting of what's behind your subject. Make it a different color and slightly dimmer and the person you're filming will pop from the background. Cameras are much more sensitive to differences in lighting than our eyes. What this means is something that may look nice and even to your eye may not look even on camera. So once you have your initial lighting set up, turn on your camera and have someone walk across your wash light and look for any hot spots or dead spots. A great tool for doing this and for setting up your cameras in general is a waveform monitor. A waveform monitor is a display that lets you see a graphical representation of the exposure your camera is seeing. So it doesn't matter if your monitors are calibrated, if you use a waveform monitor, you can get accurate and correct exposure every time. I'm using the Blackmagic Design Smart Scope. The top line of the waveform display is overexposed white. Anything over that line is what we call clipped. If a part of your image is clipping, then you are losing detail information in that part of the image. The bottom of the display is black. Anything under that line would also be clipped. For most situations, a well-lit image will have variations in lighting, but will all exist within those boundaries. No whites clipping and no blacks clipping. Try and keep a person's face exposed around the 50% to 80% line. It depends on what highlights and stuff you have in your image. And for sure, you never want to see any clipping on a face. As you have someone walk across the stage in your wash light, check where their face is on the waveform monitor and get your lighting as consistent as possible in every area of your stage that you've lit. Okay, now that you have your lighting done, let's talk about the camera. And this just became a whole lot easier because of the work you did on your lighting. There are two parts to properly setting up your camera. The first is white balance. To white balance your cameras, turn on the front wash light that you've created and place a white card right where someone would stand. I like to use white Dollar Tree foam board. Zoom your camera in on the foam board so that it fills the screen and perform a manual white balance in the camera. Do this on all your cameras in the same light and the color will now match. I like to use a Roscoe number 60 no color blue in my front wash lights. This makes my lights just a hint bluer which on camera comes out looking whiter and brighter and other colors in the video like red and purples and yellows look more vibrant. 
Next, set the exposure. Use the waveform monitor to get your subject between the 50 and 80% line. Check all your cameras and see if there's anything that's not looking right, hot spots or dead spots. It's kind of an iterative process. Go back to your lighting and try and find ways to balance things out for the exposure you want. When setting exposure, you also want to get your cameras to match in brightness as well. I've got a Data Video MCU 200 that connects to my Panasonic cameras over Cat5 cable and allows me to make adjustments to the camera's exposure from right here in the control room while seeing all the other cameras on the monitor and using the waveform monitor. Something to look for when researching cameras is a way to remotely control their exposure and white balance, as this is an extremely useful feature. It used to be a feature you could only find in really expensive studio cameras, but it's starting to make its way into mid-level cameras now. Canon has an app for controlling some of their cameras, and there is a version of the Data Video MCU 200 that will work with some Sony cameras. The goal is to get your cameras to match both color and brightness, so when you cut from one to another, it looks like you're in the same place filming the same thing. Being able to adjust this from the control room lets you make changes on the fly quickly and accurately so your cameras will match up better, especially if you have changing lighting looks during your program. I hope this has been helpful for you and you can see how lighting and proper exposure go hand in hand to making your stream look great. The next video in this series is going to focus on audio with strategies for making the audio side of your stream as good an experience as possible for your viewers. Be sure and subscribe to my channel so you'll see my future videos. Until next time, I wish you great success in your streaming endeavors.